Our revival text tonight, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. And I just want to take one verse, because I preached a story, but I'm going to give one verse emphasis. And it reads, verse 13, and not many days after, the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance with riotous living. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's, that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. My mama always taught me, son, don't put more on your plate than you can handle. And we got three nights to get through, and so that one verse is enough for tonight. I want to preach from this thought. Lessons from the far country. Lessons from the far country. In 1974, the world-renowned soul group, The Impressions, released a hit title, song that took the world by storm, finally got myself together. I'm a changed man. This secular song took the world by storm because in large part, so many people could identify with the lyrics. Yes, my song, my friends, this song is so sensitive and it's so potent. This song is a powerful song and the lyricist openly exposes all the things that um, served as distractions which led to a dead end and the dead ends which led to eventually a U-turn. I just want to use this song to highlight this text. Finally got myself together. I'm a changed man. The lyrics so simple but very descriptive in nature. If you've ever heard the song, some of you were born around that time or some of you were even, you know, jamming around that time. If you've ever heard the song, the impressions, the, the, the chorus go, Finally got myself together. Now I know just who I am. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know who I am. Now, some of you are looking at me like, you know, well, why is he using a secular song to walk into this text? And some of you would sit here and try to make people think that you've listened to Mahalia Jackson all your lives. And, and, and John P. Key and James Cleveland. Yeah, but if you catch me on the right day, Deacon Johnson, riding down 26 with my top down, you probably are not going to hear just a closer walk with thee. <laughs> yes, my friends, you, you, you're not going to hear just a closer walk with thee. But Brother Scott, you probably will hear some Barry White or you probably will hear some confunction or the stylistics. And, and yeah, real music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, 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 but I finally got myself together. Uh, the, 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 art, the writer says, I felt uptight and so confused, felt unloved, I felt abused. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I felt like Skid Row was my destiny. I'm a changed man. What an awesome testimony, my brothers and sisters. But the, the, the writer goes on, it's very descriptive. He says, a little smoke got a little drink, kept my head bad so I couldn't think. Love came alone late one night, and finally I can see the light. I'm a changed man. Uh, this serves as a timely reminder uh, to us all. Be very careful how you count people out. Yes, be very careful how you throw in the towel on folks, mm. Reverend Scott. Be very careful how you turn your nose up mm. at those in the far country. Be very careful how you 
give a side eye when that person who's in a far country just so happens to show up oh, at the church. Oh, I want to talk about lessons from the far country. Oh, but we, you know, I, I'm not sure you know, the name of the guy, woman who wrote the song, uh, that, that really doesn't matter. But, but, but I can come to some things by using deductive reasoning, Deacon Johnson, that whoever wrote the song spent some time in the far country. Oh, God, hold me. Whoever penned the lyrics to the song had a time dealing with some stuff that they were hung up on and they had a time dealing with some stuff that they were gripped by and they had some time they far, far, far away from God. That far country represents that place. That far country represents a thing. That far country represents a substance yeah. that keeps you far away from God. I want to talk about lessons from the far country. Uh, it's revival, and so why not just deal with the issues at hand? So many of our young people, so many of our adults are in the far country, but, but, but no one seems to have the answer. No one seems to have a care. No one seems to want to shine a light. No one seems to want to offer hope. This text unfolds with this prodigal son. Yeah, yeah. It's this young son. Yeah. It's always the young one most times. <laughs> he, he, he gets beside himself. Yes. yes, sir. yes. And, and he asks a question to his father because he starts smelling himself. And he asks his daddy, he says, Daddy! I want my inheritance. Give me what belongs to me. Oh. Uh, Scott, he says, give me my portion of, of the inheritance. Oh. And so the daddy obliges him. And, and, and just as fate would have it, this prodigal son sets out. Mm -hmm. Just like some of you. Just like me. When we think what we have is enough. And he sets out into this far country. And while he's in this far country, he begins to have a time. Yeah. He begins to experiment on this with, and experiment with that. Yeah. Oh. yeah, he did. He became comfortable with riotous living. Yeah. But somewhere I read that it always seems to run out when you're having a good time. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes in the far country, you have all the friends around you. But just as soon as you go broke, oh God, where? Where are the friends? Oh. Oh. Where are the friends? Where are the friends when you are all by yourself and, and all the money has run out? All the alcohol is dried up. All the weed has been burnt. Where? Where are the friends? This prodigal goes to the far country. And he goes there, Scott, by choice. That shows us in this text that God gives all of us a choice. We all have a choice. Yes, he does. Amen. The text says, verse 13, and not many days later, the younger son gathered everything. Mm -hmm. He had everything, but he really didn't have anything. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. He gathered what he thought was everything, but he really, Scott, didn't have anything. Oh, he's lost. He's distracted. And now he's far from home. Oh, my friends, my friends, the far country, if you're taking notes, the far country always presents distractions that will lead you far from God. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sin seems to be a hot topic. Oh, 
Men have become lovers of themselves. Jeez. No righteous man to be found. No righteous men to be found. And we can't find them because they're in the far country. Somebody tonight is in the far country in this room. Somebody tonight is in the far country of sexual addiction. Somebody tonight is in the far country of fornication. Somebody tonight is in the far country of gambling. Somebody tonight is in the far country of alcoholism. Who is in the far country tonight? Oh. Oh. Arrogance. High-mindedness is the far country. Oh, can't nobody tell you nothing. You seek to sow discourse and things. You're in the far country. Oh, trickery, palm readers, scratch-off, lottery. Oh, it's the far country. Sleeping with a man that ain't yours is the far country. Sleeping with a woman that's it's a far country. Oh, it's revival, so we might as well just go on and come up, come real. Oh, 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 oh. Distractions will lead you to the far country. Oh, distractions will cause you to waste your time, waste your inheritance, waste your ability, and waste time when you really could be working for the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Tonight is a good night. Yes, it is. Tonight is a good night yes, it is. to come on out of the far country. Tonight is a good night for you to come clean. Tonight is a good night for somebody to come to themselves. Oh. Oh. Secondly, Scott, this text teaches us that distractions will lead you to dead ends. Who's parked by a dead end? Oh. Oh. You're going nowhere parked by a dead end. Oh. Oh. Who am I talking to? You parked by a dead end. And God says tonight is the Jeez. night that it's time for you to come to yourself and turn around. He's at a dead end, Scott. He's hungry. He's broke. Oh, God. He's empty. He's depleted. He's been working in a pig pen. Ain't no Jew supposed to be dealing with swine. Sin always leads you to live beneath your potential and your privilege. Oh. Uh, he's in a pig pen. Oh. And his only meal option is slop. Preach. He's in a pig pen, a muddy, a dirty, a stinky, a smelly pig pen. Jesus. Somebody tonight is in a pig pen. You're living in a pig pen. You're working in a pig pen. So, 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 so. He, he, he's in a pig pen. And then he, 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 he realizes he doesn't have to be this way. It, it, it didn't have to be this way. I'm living in a place that back at home, God, back at my father's house, I don't have this issue. Back at my father's house, oh God, it's a palace. Back at my father's house, how many decisions have you made that have landed you in a pig pen? What kind of decisions have you made? Come on, let me just be honest. That have landed you in the pig pen. 
You smell like it. You look like it. The inside of you is messed up, toe up from the flow up. Sin always brings you to a low place. It always brings you to a low place. Oh, but tonight. Tonight, as a word of deliverance, because the Lord wants to set somebody free tonight. Somebody's in a mental pig pen. Speak, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Bound by drugs. Bound by somebody else's opinion. Mm. Doesn't matter how you got there, but tonight can be your turnaround. Watch me now. God used hunger pains. God used natural hunger pains to bring him down. Jesus. God used hunger pains to make him have a moment of turnaround. Jesus. Jesus. What are the hunger pains God has put on you today? Go ahead. What hunger pains? What pain is it that God has put in your life that may cause you to say, I got to turn around? Jesus. He's broke. He's hungry. And he's far from home. Jesus. Yes, Lord. That's a bad combination. <laughs> That's like being on this black dark road back here. <laughs> and your cell phone is off. <laughs> I got a witness somewhere. You, you, you on this road back here with a flat tire. <sighs> and you're going nowhere. Jesus. It's blacker than black. <sighs> but he comes to himself. He comes to himself. And somebody tonight, God is saying it's time for you to come to yourself. Yeah, yeah. God is saying you've been in this way too long. God is saying you've been in a far country too long. Jesus. And it's time for you to come to yourself. Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to himself, had a pep talk with himself. Jesus. And he got up. And he sets off for home. Yes. Who am I talking to tonight? It's time for somebody to set up for home. He has a speech prepared. He has a speech prepared. But, 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 but can't you see him? Use your spiritual imagination. Yes, yes. He's coming in the distance, yes. but the daddy is there waiting for him. Hey, He's sitting there looking for him. And he runs to the sun. Yes. And he meets him halfway. Yes. And he falls on him and kisses him. Yes. The son has a speech prepared, but the daddy embraces him with love. Yes. Through these doors. Jesus, Jesus. How do you re 
rejoice when that backslider comes down those aisles? How do you rejoice when that wayward one who's been in a far country comes home? How do you rejoice? How would you rejoice if it was your son? How would you rejoice if it was your daughter? How would you rejoice if it was your husband? That's the same rejoicing that we ought to do every single time somebody comes. Every single time somebody comes, we ought to strike a party, strike the band, throw the confetti, because another soul has come home. There's something wrong with the church. We've become too silent. People are coming. People are hurting. And you sit there like the chosen frozen. Oh, hallelujah. You sit there like God didn't do anything for you. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's good for you. So it ought to be good for somebody else. Uh, 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 Jesus. Yes! Yes, sir! Uh, I dare you, the next time somebody comes, to lose your mind because it could be your son, it could be your daughter, it could be your husband, it could be your wife that's coming! Finally, I close. And I thank God for his grace. Yes, you know what grace is. God's riches at Christ's expense. Yes, I saw myself. I'll testify. I saw myself, Scott, in that prodigal. I saw myself living in a way that was far from God. But one day, the Lord touched me. One day, the Lord saved me. One day, the Lord redirected my path. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, Jesus, my Lord Christ, grace went to Calvary. Grace died one Friday. Grace stayed buried all night Friday night. Grace stayed buried all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, grace got up with all power. Grace rose again. Grace. Anybody, anybody know something about God's grace? You ought to get on your feet and show some sign. You ought to get on your feet. If you got good religion, you ought to get on your feet and testify to your neighbor and tell them, look at me. Look what grace has done. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You want to see what grace can do. Look at me. Oh, you ain't got to look down. Look at me. Take a good picture. Because I'm living a testimony of what God's grace can do. Somebody, somebody, you need to come tonight. You need to come. You've been in a far country way too long. You're battling with this. And you're battling.
battling with that. You're battling with this. And you're struggling with that. You've been parked so long. Thank you. In this far country. But tonight is your night. If you would not be afraid of what other people would think about you, meet me down here at this altar. If you know you've been swimming in a far country too long, if you know you've been parked by a dead end, meet me at this altar. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. Doors of the church are open. Meet me at this altar. You may need special prayer. You may have a son, a daughter, a husband, or whoever in the far country. Tonight, stand in the gap for them. Come on here. Somebody, I know we have, we're not all got perfect families. You got somebody that you need to be at this altar for. Stand in the gap for somebody. Stand in the gap for a friend. Stand in the gap for a neighbor. Because there's somebody who's bound in the far country. There's somebody who needs to know Jesus. There's somebody who needs to turn around. There's somebody who needs to know. Who needs to know that you can turn around. Alcohol is no match for Jesus. Drugs is no match for Jesus. Your sex addiction is no match for Jesus. Your fornication is no match for Jesus. Your adultery is no match for Jesus. Oh. He wants to turn you around. He wants to turn you around. Repeat after me. All eyes closed. Lift your hands towards heaven. Lord. Turn me around. Lord, I've sinned. I've done it wrong. I haven't always done it right. But tonight, here I stand. Here I stand, Lord. Turn to me, asking you to turn me around. Lord, if you be so kind, give me the strength tonight to let it go. To let him go. To let her go. To let them go. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe you. I believe you right now that you're going to turn me around. You are turning me around right now. You're turning me around by faith. Oh, God, thank you. God, move at this altar. God, move at this altar. Somebody's standing in the gap for a friend. Somebody's son is on drugs. Somebody's husband is on cocaine. But Lord, we know that you have all power. You have all power, Lord. And Lord, right now, we believe you to do a turnaround. Oh, we believe you to do a turnaround. We believe you to do a turnaround. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.